So we will start in a second. We are, t we are going to try to be very, very, very pedagogic because this space is very new. It has been growing quite fast in the next, in the last uh, year or so. Uh, whether you call it jobbing, peer-to-peer -peer services or task sharing, actually we're going to discuss that. What is the relevant name for this new industry? Uh, so it has been it has been growing. It has been growing in in France, in Spain, uh, all around the world, also in the U.S. with a company uh, called uh, TaskRabbit, which uh, most of you have heard, I guess. Uh, we have here four entrepreneurs uh, who started four startups in in, in that space. So um, we have uh, Jan Stali from uh, Mila.com, Ramon Blanco uh, from ETC, so ETC is in Spain, Mila is, in, is already in, uh, in five or between five and ten cities in the world, uh, Benjamin Lane from UPJob.com and Laurent Blanchard uh, who is uh, the founder of uh, Unit. Uh, I will let them introduce themselves for uh, two or three minutes and after that we will um, discuss about, about the rise of, of the peer-to-peer -peer services economy, and I will let the audience ask a few questions um, at the end. So we will probably discuss all together for 30 minutes, and uh, we'll have like 10 minutes for, uh, for questions at, at the end. So uh, Laurent, maybe you can start if you want. Okay, hello everybody, my name is Laurent. I'm 30 year, 38 years old, I'm not an internet guy. I've spent 10 years at Procter & Gamble and uh, four years at uh, Carlsberg Group. So I am a guy from the multinational companies and I was uh, at the board uh, locally in these companies and I saw a few years ago what uh, happens right now on uh, the market of employment, if we can call it like that. So uh, I've decided to, to launch UNID. What is UNID? UNID empowers uh, anyone to create revenues, incomes, from its talent, know-how, whatever it is, where, we, where it is. So on your need, uh, you can find magicians, you can find gardeners, you can find skateboard lessons. You just say to the people, you need to generate incremental incomes because you don't have work or your work is not enough uh, now. So we put you into a uh, in situation of success to uh, generate additional uh, incomes from uh, what you know uh, to do, what you like to do. Uh, our um, slogan is uh, power to, to, our baseline is power to people, this is the aim, is to uh, give again power to the people, uh, power uh, to uh, manage their life and uh, activate all the drivers uh, they have uh, to uh, manage their life. Um, we have, we have two key points of uh, difference, I would say. Uh, the first one is uh, our mission. Our mission is to value people, to help them to value their incomes. If you come on Saturday, uh, there, is, there will be a, a show where we propose to all the people who propose services on UNID to gain uh, their own uh, poster in order to uh, do their own uh, virality on uh, internet or in the real life at the baker, at the butcher, in order to help them make, mm, be known by uh, their neighbors and uh, order the force of talents. Our second point of uh, difference is uh, we are going to be the first in France uh, in the coming days uh, to propose um, a transaction uh, payment completely uh, legalized. What uh, do I mean? I mean uh, I am a particular, I want to generate incremental incomes on your need. Uh, and uh, I need to be declared if I am uh, right with the law. So we are going to propose to these people to uh, automatically uh, help them to declare uh, what they need to pay to the state and uh, to make it easy uh, for them. And we are working on that uh, with uh, my colleague uh, who is in the room, uh, Eric, uh, who is leading uh, Penang Company, uh, which is uh, deeply uh, working with the state for a few months now uh, to make it happen. Uh, I will uh, answer to all your questions uh, later. I uh, let the microphone to my colleague. Thank you. 
Hi everybody, my name is Benjamin. Um, I'm co-founder of UP Job. Uh, UP Job is a Swiss-based company in Geneva. Um, we, uh, with my partner, uh, you couldn't be there, sorry for him. Um, with my partner, we founded UP Job last year. Uh, we were both working at Groupon in Paris. I'm sure a lot of you know Groupon. And um, we originally um, focus on one point um, differencing with, for example, you need other uh, platform is at Groupon, we were really short in time. Because in, in Groupon, and I'm sure there are a lot of people here experiencing the same thing, is in our life, we are just lacking a lot of time. And we, when we have just free time, we do not want to focus on um, daily tasks, like uh, going to the laundry, uh, cooking, or uh, uh, just going for um, putting this stuff to this place, X and So we just focus on helping people to save time. Um, so UP job is really focused for those people uh, that want to save time. So it's really easy to, to pass the job and just to outsource what, do you, what you do want to do. And we also wanted to, to help people, um, can be that talented people like magician, but on UP job you don't have a lot of magician, you more have uh, people working already, but more plumber or uh, people for house working, for uh, cooking, babysitting, etc. People that want to make extra cash, because we know with the crisis, unfortunately, there are a lot of people skilled, ha having time and wanting to, to make extra cash. And we just try to connect those two people, people with money but lacking time and people with time but lacking money. This is what we are trying to do. And it's working pretty well. And now we are in France, Switzerland, Belgium, and the UK. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Ramon Blanco. Uh, I guess I'm a little bit more of an internet guy for a while. I uh, founded uh, Set Trade, which uh, some of you may know because it's a originally a French company in, uh, in Spain some 12 years ago. And then I, uh, I stayed uh, with uh, the group that acquired us, which is a Bursorama Bank, which I'm sure uh, that a lot of you know, as number two as, uh, until one year ago. Then I decided to found uh, ETF. Uh, the big feature about ETF is that uh, in the year, uh, in the decade of the 90s, uh, there was a lot of information in, uh, over the internet, and it was difficult, and then, you know, the portals uh, appeared to order it. In the decade of the 2000s, we had the e-commerce, okay, and basically what they were doing, the shops, is ordering the, the sale of goods, and what's missing is ordering the selling of services, okay? So, uh, so what the TETE is doing is connecting small independent professionals, like a plumber, a carpenter, or uh, it could be a magician as well, with uh, retail people, with uh, private individuals and companies who uh, do not have time or do not have the knowledge to do uh, different things. Uh, we connect both platforms. Uh, we uh, build trust uh, in the platform, first by uh, interviewing physically uh, people guy by guy, the, uh, the professionals, we go city by city interviewing the professionals and then through the opinions of the uh, clients who use the service who uh, we store in the platform and uh, make available to, uh, to next clients. Uh, one of the, of the things maybe relevant is this, uh, is this a small thing or is this a, a big thing? Um, I believe uh, it's going to be a very, very, very big thing. Uh, let alone in Spain, there are more than 10 million home repair transactions in the, uh, uh, every year. So uh, most of them are done by uh, insurance companies, most of them are done by uh, the guy who knows the guy who knows the guy. If we are able to order this, and if we are able to order this at, the, at an international level, it will be a huge industry and, uh, and a big source of, uh, of value for, uh, for the society. On the, um, on the, uh, that's on the client side. On the solution side, which is on the independent professional side, the main thing, and it's a hot topic, very hot topic, as you can all understand in Spain right now, is uh, what do we make with 27% uh, of the people who are uh, unemployed right now? So basically, this is the right pl platform for people to make a living, which is a, a real thing. We already have a couple of dozens of people who are making between 1,000 euros and 2,000 euros per, per month out of the platform. Uh, 
and we are helping this, uh, these guys uh, basically live through the, uh, through the crisis and the recession. Hello, my name is Jan Steli. I'm from Switzerland. Maybe you hear it from my accent. I'm working for Mila, which is a brand new company, a spin-off from Core Systems, which is an international-based uh, company in the IT sector. I'm the head of sales, and Mila is a platform where you can share your tasks and where you can find the errands that uh, propose their service. So the system is quite easy. If you are a Mila user, you can be a private user, you can be a professional. You can just post your need. Maybe you need a babysitter, maybe you need a cleaning lady, someone who helps you when you're moving from a place to another. Maybe you need someone who helps you to repair your bicycle. This is exactly what you can put on Mila, and on the other side, you can put your services. So if you're a professional painter, for example, you can put your services on Mila and ask uh, to solve the needs of other people. You, on one side, as I said, you can put needs and services on the other side. So we are looking for private person, people who can solve needs of others, but we are also looking for small companies like one-man shows who are working and finding new customers through our platform. The difference to the other platforms is that Mila is already available globally, so we are starting at the moment, especially w with marketing activities in Zurich because we're a Swiss company, and in Berlin. In Berlin, we'll, we will just uh, create a sales and marketing team to uh, enter the market there. Uh, we have the Android development team, which is in Shanghai. So Shanghai is a very important place for us as well because we see a massive potential due to the big service demand in Asian countries, and especially as well in Jakarta, in Indonesia, because just after two months, when we launched Mila inofficially, we already had approximately 300 service providers in, in Jakarta. So we see as well the massive potential of Mila in upcoming markets uh, where people are more or less, uh, are often work, work less or poor people which don't know what to do. They can just share their services. You need to think about the possibility uh, if, you, if you're a mother at home with two children, you often cannot go to work, but maybe you have little, little knowledge what you can provide or help for example your neighbor to i don't know uh, make babysitting for other people or whatever this is the idea of mila we just raised two and a half million euros from different uh, investors and as i said the next countries will certainly be as well france and i ask you to put your needs whatever it is on mila and of course if you have any skills put them as well as services and try to help each other to make a better living world. Thanks. Uh, <coughs> when I hear you introducing your services, I see a big difference. Some of you are talking about private people and some of you are talking about professionals. So uh, are you serving uh, only private people or are you connecting only private people or are you also connecting professionals? And uh, more generally, more generally, what makes what makes a profession? When a private person becomes a profession? Uh, our biggest, I wouldn't say problem, but challenge today is to bring the critical mass on our platform. And for us, it is very difficult to know what kind of skills the individual person have. So we are more or less forced to target <coughs> professional companies. That means as well like freelancing people where we know exactly, okay, this is a painter. We bring him onto the platform, he has customers, he brings these customers onto the platform, the transaction can be done, everything. The goal, of course, is in a, in a future step that we will have a lot of private people working uh, and helping each other. Uh, for us, uh, a professional is someone who has a license who says he's a professional. Normally a professional, at least in Spain, is uh, you need to, to have a license, you need to have certain papers, and you need to, to have an insurance in case something happens. Uh, I think in, in, in France you have something similar, which is uh, l'Estatut d'Autorité Professionnelle. Uh, 
uh, so that would be the uh, the equivalent. And uh, but the, the equivalent of uh, auto entrepreneur in Spain uh, charges you two hundred euros per month. Or something yeah, like and yeah. that's uh, and that's the big issue. Whereas the auto entrepreneur, auto entrepreneur is free. Correct. Yeah. In Spain, you you need to pay two hundred and fifty euros per month, which is a huge issue. But even more important, if there are policy makers here in the uh, in the room, is that. Um, if you are an auto entrepreneur, if you are a, uh, a professional, you cannot. Uh, you need to waive your uh, unemployment insurance, <coughs> and that's the uh, the real hot topic because uh, the people don't want to work because they still have unemployment insurance to uh, to recover, and therefore we cannot find some professionals in certain things like, for example, cleaners, because uh, they prefer to receive the unemployment insurance. In your job it's quite different because in your job it's only for private people. We don't have any professional on your job and we don't want professional because we don't think that it's the right place for them for this. First, because we are part of the collaborative consumption economy and for us it's just uh, putting people together, not professional because for us it's more conventional. Um, so on your job you just have private people and why it's important just to have private people it's because the needs you have um, most of jobbing platform, um, it's just little needs and you would never pay a professional for, for doing that because for two reasons. A professional would not accept to do the needs you have most of the time and a professional, if you do that, uh, would charge you a lot for this. For example, on UP job, and it was the same thing on TaskRabbit, we have a lot of people asking for house working. For example, uh, someone needed uh, a piece of furniture to be assembled or whatever, they will never, and you will never ask a professional to come to your house and just to, to build your desk. You just bought to IKEA. So you just will find a private people that has time for doing this and skill for doing it, and he will make it for you and he will not charge you a lot for this. So on UP job, we don't have professional and we don't think that jobbing can match with uh, professional people. So is that fine if a private person makes money on UP job and doesn't declare what? Um, we don't say people not to declare. We uh, we made a lot of research. We uh, spent a lot of money on lawyers in different countries. And in France, you can for sure uh, work even if you have not the work, even if you are unemployed. Uh, for example, in France, if you um, just receive money from the state because you are unemployed, you can work and it will not make an impact on um, the, the money you receive from the state. So I, it's totally legal. And you, you have to know that service between private people, it's, it always existed in France and in other countries. It's particularly legal to do that. You just have to declare. One euro, you, you, you earn one euro to have to declare in France. But it's perfectly normal. And for example, with the URSAF, sorry for those guys, but it's particular to France. But for example, URSAF, they make on the website, just uh, in a few clicks, you can declare what you, you earn. So you can work for private people, it's legal, but you have to declare it. And do, do people declare what they make? Actually, I can't check if people do it. My assumption is on UP job, people make the same things they do outside of UP job. And we know, thanks to statistics, that in France, it's quite the same thing in, in Germany, in Switzerland, in, in the UK, they are like, 40% of people who is not declaring this. And so I assume that in, in UP job could be the same thing. But the thing is, people are not declaring because they don't want to. They are not declaring because it's very um, time consuming to do this. And that's why there are people like, for example, Eric with Paynem working with this. That's why we are trying to help people to do that. Because if you declare, you have insurance that if there is uh, a problem, you know, that you can be uh, insured for that. So people want to declare, but the thing is, it's very time consuming. What, what, what is more generally the, 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 the economic impact of this rising economy at the local level and maybe at the national level? So if we see this economy and more people connecting to each other online to, to share tasks offline, what, what could be the impact on, on existing industries, traditional industries? Because you're basically dis disintermediating uh, existing traditional uh, businesses. So what could be the impact on those businesses? Are you growing a, an existing market? What, what is the impact? Yeah, I think um, uh, 
first of all, I think we don't have this pretension, any pretension. I think at the beginning, the objective is how can we help the maximum people easily to live in dignity from the work where they are. And after that, we have worked to organize it. And uh, we are still have uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of work uh, on that subject. Uh, so it's too early to say uh, if we take uh, something to someone. I think we are more incremental right now. For example, on UNID, uh, the first people who have, uh, did, uh, have done uh, business uh, really, uh, it can increase uh, significantly uh, the incomes. Uh, in France, one French out of two earns less than 1,600 euros per month. When you earn uh, Saturday morning in three hours 150 or 200 euros, it's a uh, net incremental 10% in uh, half a day. And it changed the life of these people. And especially to these people who uh, right now, uh, when uh, the 20th of the month comes, uh, don't know how uh, to do. What is the and average? It, and it will launch, just to conclude, it, it's, it, it's, uh, it's uh, positive because this money they did not have, they will have the opportunity to spend it again locally because uh, this kind of people, they don't go to the Maldives in vacation. The question is, how uh, do I feed my kids? Et and, and now I don't know how. My job is not enough. So with this 100 or 200 euros they can earn each month, with the jobbing, but they can earn these uh, euros also with the other solutions of the uh, uh, sharing economy. Uh, it's, it's, it's very positive because I think all the actors of the market earn. If, we de if you declare the state earn, the guy who, who provides the job earn, and uh, the money he earns, he spends it again in the economy. So uh, it's, uh, it's very positive for everybody. What, what is the average income per hour on your platforms? So some, could you share some data on, on how many users, how many transactions per users? Um, actually, on Mila, we have approximately 4,000 profiles, which are across the globe from uh, China to uh, South America. Um, I would, I mean, it, it depends very much from, from, the, from the country. In Switzerland, uh, Average transaction amount is approximately 120 Swiss francs, 100 euro. In, uh, in but this Asia is a transaction, but like per hour, do you have an idea? Because this is more relevant, probably. Yeah, but I mean, it, it totally depends what you're doing. Maybe you are doing a job which is just, let's say, cleaning a house for a whole day, and you say, okay, for the whole day, I would like to have 300 euros. But then there is a moving, moving company or someone who helps you to move your furniture from one place to the other, which asks for, I don't know, 35 euros, or a cleaning lady in Switzerland is 30 euros. So it, it depends very much, but at least it is cheaper if a private person can handle the job than if you give it to a professional. But it's very important that you don't misunderstand it. We don't would like to take away the jobs from professionals in this case. It's just for smaller, smaller little tasks that can be taken over from individuals, like cutting the grass in the garden or cutting a tree in the garden or whatever. What, what are the other tasks? Maybe could you share the examples of tasks that uh, people could do on, y on your platforms? Yeah, actually we have a very, very nice task in Zurich, which is very demanded. It's a cleaning lady for the whole day and she cooks a very nice meal just when you come home, the meal is ready. Uh, I mean, it might be very funny, and especially journalists like stories like that, but this is exactly what people are looking for. I mean, can you imagine you give the key in the morning to a lady, she cleans the whole apartment, you come home, it's cooked, everything is fine, you just can eat and pay the, and pay the girl. And she, maybe, she is a, a housewife, has two children at home, another woman is taking care about her children on meal as well. So, yeah, we have very different task from, as I said, from a painter to a sports trainer or whatever. Benjamin? Yes. Um, on UP Job, we have a lot of um, women uh, using UP Job for uh, just having people helping them for housework, like assembling furniture or whatever. And just to coming back to your first question, um, impact globally and locally, there is another impact because we are a lot talking about money and money is important for those people 
uh, either if you want to save money or to make money. But there is another thing we, we are not talking about is social linking. Uh, and th I think it's important for us because it's we share fast too. Um, for example, we, we usually make interviews of what we call jobbers, people doing jobs. And we uh, just make an, made an interview with someone uh, hired for assembling uh, a desk for, uh, for a little girl. And he said at the end of uh, the interview, um, his best memory was the little girl just made him a kiss and saying thank you. And he just said it was uh, wonderful for me because I was first fired at my first job, then I worked as a freelance, but he didn't get any money. And he was just um, alone at home. And there are a lot of people using UP job or uh, the other platform and saying, thanks to those platform, I can just contact people, connect with people and just create a new link with people. Uh, so there is money, but people are not using it all only for money. Yeah, that's, tr th th that's right. Uh, we uh, analyze the same thing. Some people are, for example, there was a, jo uh, a young um, entrepreneur girl who uh, ordered on UD for uh, a friend who just had a baby, a doudou, uh, for the gift of the kid. So she asked for a girl who realized it. And, and she said, I paid it, but on top of that, I am happy to pay this person. And she, uh, after that, recommends the person on uh, the Facebook page and, and support her. In fact, you're not only paying for the service, you are paying for the people and supporting the people. <laughs> because you say, he's good in what he, do, he does, and uh, I want to value him and uh, make him, uh, and help him to be in chances of success. And, and to complete uh, for uh, the value creation, uh, we have a lot of uh, workers with their hands, okay? For uh, the intellectual people, you have LinkedIn, the, the, the regular model, I would say. Our platforms are a really good solution for the workers with their hands to value their work. Why? Because now when you do a focus group with nannies, okay, five nannies, in the human nature, you have one nanny with a one star, two star, uh, three star, four star, and five star. Uh, and they are all paid one star. So with the jobbing platform tomorrow, because you're good in what you do, uh, when you sell today uh, 8 uh, euro per hour, if you have five stars, we are going to put you in situation to meet people who are ready to pay 20 because they want the, the top one, because they have the ambassador tonight at home. Is it, is it, really, uh, is it really true? Like, like really, people are ready to spend more if the person, or will people spend Will people try to spend the least amount of money, and are you going to help uh, basically put people in competition with one another and lower the the, the price for the for the kind of services? I mean, it's 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 a, a concern I, I guess many people in the room might have. So how can you be so certain that people will pay more to have people to 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 to, to have services from from people with a great reputation and not be looking for people who are able, to, who are ready to, to do the service for lower income? Uh, in, I think it's a question of, it's our job somewhere to, uh, to, to know how we are going to uh, explain uh, this new market to the people. Some will choose it's cheap, that's their choice. Some will choose we, we value the people. And, uh, and it's in all markets. Some people uh, will be uh, very, uh, it is going to be very important for you to have the best magician and maybe not the best uh, house uh, keeping uh, wife. So you are ready to pay five stars for the magician because you want the best and one star or two star for uh, the gardener. So I I the market will also uh, regulate. Well, uh, some people have a lot of uh, revenues. They earn, uh, to 200,000, 300,000 euros per, month per year. And it's not a question of eight or 10 or 15 euros per hour. If it's important for them, they are ready to pay, like they are ready to pay for a car, for uh, food or for something else. Did, did you all integrate reputation systems on the platform and how, how, how does it work, Mimi and Ramon? Yes, uh, actually, uh, all, I mean, collaborative consumption in general is about building trust between strangers. That's at the basis of, uh, of everything. So uh, yes, since the beginning, uh, one of the big difference between uh, between uh, Edete and, and, and the rest of the system is 
that we, we control all of the transaction. So we control who is in the platform and who has to get out of the platform and how everything is paid, okay? Because everything is paid through the platform. Therefore, uh, since the beginning, every single transaction that comes through the platform is uh, valued, okay, uh, by the customer, and it's and in order to pay, it's compulsory to uh, to evaluate the guy who did it, and therefore every single transaction has uh, from one to five, okay, associated to uh, the guy who provided the transaction, and this obviously is uh, available to future customers of this uh, of this individual. Could you imagine integrate private people in your service in the future? And do you think that there will be platforms in Spain that will uh, help private people to make money out of uh, tasks? I have, uh, uh, to be honest, I, ha I have doubts. Uh, I can understand that in uh, other countries, like in France or maybe in Switzerland, it's uh, it's legal and you can you can uh, integrate uh, private people. But there is there is one aspect which is which is key. Okay, the key in this uh, in these services is to, to match demand and offer, okay? Uh, because you may have a lot of people with a lot of skills, okay? With uh, you, may, you may have a lot of plum plumbers, but no need for plumbers. You may have a lot of uh, cleaning people, but no need for cleaning people and the other situation around. So what happens is that uh, if you send a painter, okay? Uh, and it's a private individual to your house, and uh, the guy doesn't paint very well, he will be tremendously disappointed and probably will never use it again. So using a professional minimizes that, that risk, and controlling the transaction minimizes that risk because if he is not happy, we will enter and send another guy to paint the, tr to paint the, the room. When you have private individuals, the, uh, the business model is uh, it's, uh, it's cooler because I mean you can be in uh, many countries at the same time but uh, we are a believer that uh, satis we are a service company. Satisfaction is everything in a service company. And in order to provide uh, satisfaction, you need to control the transaction. So uh, we will need to find a good way of qualifying private individuals to, go to do very, very, very good jobs the first time. Benjamin? Yes, uh, it's just because I, I disagree with you. Um, now, because how many people already said, I ask a professional to do that, but it was bad, or how many people just ask someone, do you know a good professional? So I think for me, either it is a private people or a professional, the reputation I is a stake. Uh, so, I mean, for example, in the US, you have NG's list, uh, so you have a list of professional, and they are, uh, with, as they are rated, reviewed, etc. And I think people can be professional, people can be uh, private, private people, thing is, they need to be reviewed and rated. So, uh, okay, to be a professional, you can minimize this risk, but uh, as I said, how many people just experience uh, a bad thing with a professional? So, uh, reputation is uh, more important. What, what, what is the future of society if everyone has reviews and reputation? Uh, if I once uh, don't behave just like the way I should have done, on your platforms, what's going to happen to me? Are you going to kick me out just the first time or will I have another opportunity to make some good? I think you will be kicked out right away. No, I think everyone has, uh, of course, it, the possibility to get a second chance and y you always will get bad reviews from your customers. I personally think that the future of collaboration consumption is as Ramon already said, based on the on the feedback of other people, on your own image, which is online and how you are behaving, how you are doing your job. And I think this is something that you cannot buy somewhere. So you need to work on the quality of, 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 of your work. You need to, to work on, on, the, on the network you are working with to get this good feedback from your customers and to have a good good image, on, online image. In fact, uh, you're gonna kick off uh, by yourself. If you have a, a bad notation and if you have a wrong uh, recommendations, or no recommendations, or it's up to you somewhere, uh, it's up to you. Okay.
Uh, let's maybe get back to entrepreneurship, uh, how you started building your platform like as a, a two-side marketplace, how important is the community, uh, how do you spend your money in marketing, uh, how do you get to, to know your investors, because I know that there are a lot of entrepreneurs in the room, so that's th these are the questions they're usually interested in, and, and how do you scale? So those are, those are the questions you might want to answer in the, the next 10 minutes. Yeah, as you, yeah, let's start with the global uh, company. Yeah. Okay, it doesn't matter if you're a global company or a private or a small company, whatever. I think the easiest, or I mean, it's even not the easiest way, but it is always tough to find investors. But the best way, and that's how the way we did it, we build up our own network of investors. By speaking to different people, we got contacts to other people, and that helped us a lot to know exactly what is required. I also have been to San Francisco in the Silicon Valley, and ju just to, to, to check what, is, what it is all about to get a VC, and to speak with those kind of investors which have millions and billions of US dollars to spend in little companies where dreams are growing. And we quickly had to, 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 yeah, to renounce that or it was maybe a little wrong approach to think that a little Swiss company can just go to Silicon Valley to make a nice pitch and then we get the money. So it's not like that, unfortunately. Um, we had to do a lot of homework and we found out that sometimes, especially for seed investment or A investment, it is better to, to find a little community or a network of private investors, angel investors that might help you and which are really believing in the idea and supporting you in your business model and in what you are really doing. And that's the way how we got our investment of 2.5 million. Now regarding scaling, I mean, our platform is here to have this hockey stick that everyone is looking for, of course. At the moment, we are just starting and we would like to bring as much traffic on the platform as possible. And this is our biggest challenge at the moment. We still have reviews with our investors. They check what kind of other possibilities we have. We bring in new ways how to make business, like for example, you know that on IKEA, for example, on the webpage, if you are, would like to buy some furniture, they are always stipulated, or sometimes stipulated, that, that you need to mount or assemble the, the furniture yourself. So here we see a, a potential, how we can go into the game and bring people to put the need onto the Mila platform, which asks to help to build up this bed or this cupboard or whatever. Um, well, in our case, we raise half a million euros and we are about to close the second round for another half a million. Um, I think if you are an entrepreneur, you need to, to think uh, very clearly on two topics. One is, how do you see your business moving forward? Okay, is, is it going to be a business of explosive growth or is it going to be a more of a classical business which is going to be very, very painful at the beginning and uh, is going to grow uh, little by little? If it's the second case, okay, uh, you shouldn't go and see uh, venture capital people because first, they won't be interested and second, uh, they're not going to understand it. Okay? If it's the first case, you, def you should definitely try to, to, to go and see the venture capitalists. So in our case, we are in the in the second uh, in the second one, which I described, which is we believe that is going to be that building. A, we believe that building a platform is uh, is difficult, as the guy from Airbnb said this morning. You know, after one year, the Airbnb guys had uh, 100 users. So uh, we believe this is going to be the case with these kinds of platforms, and therefore what we did is that uh, we look for uh, for our close network. Okay, of uh, friends, family, and, uh, and business angels. Uh, that says something on you, because if you are not able to put your money and the money of your family into the business, everybody's going to tell you that uh, you don't believe uh, so much into your business. So you absolutely need to do, to do it to, to be credible. And then my, my advice uh, as well is that uh, if uh, you are not sure if the, if the business is going to scale very fast, which is the case in most of the, uh, of the, uh, of the cases uh, for platforms, what 
you shouldn't do is bring the VC, bring uh, smart people too early into the game because they will ask for uh, for clauses. Okay, they will ask uh, to have uh, the driver seat in order to make a uh, capital increase. They will ask for uh, uh, certain conditions that uh, will mean that if you do not uh, hit the milestones very early in the game, you will lose the control of the company. And normally what happens in these cases, I mean, it's, it's just the statistics. I mean, 50%, I don't know if you, you guys know it, but uh, when there is smart money into the companies, this is uh, American statistics, 50% of the founders, okay, three years into the game are sacked, okay? So they do not uh, stay in the company anymore. Why? Because smart, smart money wants uh, milestones and they want them very fast. Yes, so for us, we, um, we raised half million euros, yeah, you did. Um, thing is, what is very important either for raising money on when you're just working for your startup is the ability to, to get back. Because, for example, um, um, Jan said it was not maybe the better approach to go to the Silicon Valley, but I think it's a good way of doing I mean, to just get back and go to see people, for example, just to be here. I think it's a good decision to be here as an entrepreneur. Because when you work for your startup, you just want to spend every hour, every minute working. But it's not the better thing to do. The better thing to do is not to, to work every time, every minute. You need to just get back, talk to people. For example, I learn from what they say. I learn from what you ask. So it's very important to, to face people and to talk about your project, to talk about talk about it with VC, et cetera. And I think it's, n it's never too early to talk to VC, but the worst case is they just will say, okay, come back later to talk about it. But you need to uh, just get back and talk to people, talk every time of your project, and don't be afraid as we are in France most of the time. Don't be afraid just people just get your idea and try to do the same thing. But you can see we are four. We can see that we are all working in the same rise of jobbing, but our platform are different. It's not the same market, et cetera, et cetera. So don't be afraid, get back and talk about it. Uh, as, as they talked a lot about uh, investment and VC, maybe you can talk more about marketing and I mean, how you're building a community, how you're getting your first users on both sides of the, of the marketplace. Yeah. Uh, just uh, uh, two tips uh, on the investor side. Um, uh, it's pity because it seems that time is not to risk and uh, the world is changing and uh, I think it's time to beat. And uh, we are on a very new uh, market, sharing economy and in sharing economy jobbing. So uh, it starts to be known, but it's not very famous already. Investors, from my experience, what are they, uh, they are expected? They are two expected two key drivers. The first one is your capability to generate regular traffic, which is growing. Or the second one is uh, your capability to uh, uh, sell, to uh, generate incomes. If you match to one of these two uh, drivers, I think you have your chance uh, to, to, to get money. From, um, from uh, our building as a community, uh, it's a lot of tests. As I said, I'm not a guy from internet, so I learned a lot uh, a year ago. Um, uh, we have tried, we have started to uh, federate uh, some uh, few uh, users, people who have used Unid, and uh, we continue every day with uh, Patrick on that subject, uh, or who like the idea of Unid. Because when we speak to people, uh, they say uh, some light in the night. Uh, bad news, bad news every day, and Unid is a good news, and it's some kind of hope, and I want to transmit uh, this hope, and I know a lot of people around me who can be interested in. Um, I think uh, we have a very small business. The best question on that is maybe uh, the, 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 the model of Airbnb or people like that who have succeeded to build strong uh, community, and uh, they, they proceed by meetup, so we try to copy them, and uh, uh, we try to uh, make it happen in the real life. In, in fact, I think that it's going to work if people can work and gain money and uh, if people share experience and, uh, and become the own ambassadors of our uh, different uh, platforms. We are going to take a few questions from the audience. Stanislas already have one. And uh, 
Two questions? Ah, okay, okay, we, are, we have two, okay, two questions. One question, Modesto just has one question. Sorry. So I'm Stan, I'm an editor for WeShare. Um, I will have a, a general observation about your market. Um, okay, so you are basically disintermediating the, 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 the market, enabling people to uh, offer directly service to people, but what's the more macroeconomic effect? In a context in Spain, for instance, where you have 20, 30 percent of the of un unemployment, what's going to happen? These people who are going to move from unemployment to these short-term um, um, jobs, they're going to compete with uh, the traditional labor market. But at the same time, they don't get the benefits from uh, a full-paid uh, position where you have social insurance, um, unemployment benefits if you finally lose your job, and so on. So I'm not here to, uh, to, to accuse what you are doing. I mean, I'm, I'm liberal. I think that whatever, I mean, when people freely exchange, there's nothing bad. But I think the more general context, the, the environment right now is just not ready for that. And OK, you might generate more activity, more short-term employment, but you are now solving the problem of the precariat, the fact that we are living in a world where more and more people are falling into the status of short-term contracts, uh, in insecurity, not just in terms of income, but also in terms of status. Because, OK, maybe you, you, you can make 2,000 two euros um, a month with your system, but can you, can you pledge? Can you pledge this uh, income to a bank to get a credit or to, uh, to, get, to, to, to get a home, to rent a home, basically? So I'm just questioning this, not, not to accuse what you are doing. I think this is the future anyway. But I'm just saying, wha what are we going to do at the more general level, at the institutional level? What, I, what proposal, what reforms should we, um, should we push uh, to the government? Okay, uh, since, since we have uh, 6.2 million unemployed, I, will, I think I will, I, will, I will take the question. <laughs> um, I think the, uh, the, the big picture really, I mean, as you were saying, the, the macroeconomic scenario, at, the, at, the, at least in Western Europe, is can we, can we maintain the level of uh, government spending that we have had until now? Uh, I know in the south of Europe, uh, certainly the question is no. It's uh, evident, okay? Uh, when you go to the north of Europe, the question uh, can be uh, maybe. When you are in the middle, like in France, uh, well, I, leave it, uh, I leave it up to the audience. <laughs> what, is, what is sure, okay, is that uh, we were in an environment, we have uh, all worked in an environment where we were seeking security for the jobs. With the security for the jobs, it's true, comes the inflexibility. Inflexibility to hire, okay? Uh, and in inflexibility as well to, uh, to dismiss. What I think that the, the big macroeconomic scenario is, do we prefer less people to work, okay? With uh, stability and security and higher income? Or do we prefer more people to work, maybe with less stability, okay? but uh, making a nation of entrepreneurs because at the end of the day the people who are going to take who, is, who are taking uh, a small tax uh, they are becoming entrepreneurs it's a very valid question okay uh, from this from the society point of view it's something that the uh, that the policymakers need to to think about uh, probably at the European level uh, for me it's very clear for me uh, if you ask me uh, there is only one way we need to in, in, in Europe if we want to have uh, unemployment rates which are closer to, to sustainability something around five percent we need to become much more flexible in the laws that means a lot of things okay uh, but certainly we need to, to change the mind the mentality of the people okay so that the people believe that being an entrepreneur, no matter in which field, is as good as working for uh, France Telecom or uh, Shell. And this is not the case today. Um, to answer quickly to your question, we are not uh, God and we do not pretend uh, to fix uh, all the issues uh, we face right now. 
we just come with few solutions which I think are quite positive because they put people who need it in a situation to success. Um, we try to uh, encourage the people who uh, generate incremental uh, incomes, richness, to declare it and to play a collective uh, and not uh, doing black uh, work or illegal work. So we try to fix that. And I'm, I, I, I completely agree with you. We will not succeed if we not work all together with the politics, uh, shooting in the si same direction, which is uh, giving the ability to the people to uh, work with dignity uh, from uh, their talent, where they are, uh, whatever it is. And uh, we will not fix it to alone, but uh, it's quite difficult to speak with the politics and to, the, to have this uh, agility from the politics. The change will not wait for us. And if we do not the change by ourselves, the Chinese will do it for us. And we, uh, and we <laughs> depend from the Chinese law when we work in France because we are on a Chinese platform. So it's up to us to work all together, the entrepreneur, the politics, but also the big companies which can help us to speak to the large amount of people in order to propose these solutions and to make it uh, coherent uh, I win, and when I win, I make the collective uh, win. Thank you. We have no more time for questions. Uh, we are actually running a little bit late. Please, uh, a uh, round of applause for the panelists.